Hey folks, for my next lesson, I'm in assignment six and I'm looking at my lessons and I should have downloaded file B, which is called guy with hair. And if I go into Photoshop, he's right here. Now, if I didn't have that open, let's pretend I didn't have it open. I can go into my downloads folder. I can find 06 start.psd, which is this gentleman. I can just drag and drop and now he's open. Now, what I want to do today is I want to work on making a selection that's really, really, really effective. I want to get all around the edge of this guy's face and all of this hair, and I don't want any background. And that would be really, really difficult to do with something like the lasso tool. That's actually not the worst thing ever. Actually, it's terrible. So there we go. And nope, that didn't work. So I'm going to command D and get rid of that. Um, obviously, I need something a little bit more effective than the lasso tool. And if you look, I'm going to go over to the one below that, the fourth tool down on my left-hand tools panel, and I'm going to select the brush with this little dotted oval next to it. That's my quick select tool, and you're going to use quick select all the time. So if I look at my radius of my quick select tool, I can obviously change that, make it bigger, the diameter, by my right bracket key or smaller with the left bracket key. Also, I can also go ahead and I can make part of a selection. And you'll see I click and I drag a little bit and it selected most of the gentleman. Now the issue is it didn't get his nose, it didn't get the back of his shirt. Now this br uh, brush is huge, so I'm gonna make it smaller with my bracket key. And I can go in and I can click and make sure the nose and the glasses are included and the back of the shirt. But I've used my quick select tool to select a pretty good dotted line around the edge of uh, this guy right here. Um, if it's selected too much accidentally, I can go ahead and take away from the selection by holding down the option key. See how it changes this to be a minus sign inside. And now I can go and click and drag to get rid of stuff as well. And I can release. So I got my selection. It's still not good enough though. Some of the background is still gonna be showing. So with quick select selected, I'm gonna go up and if I look near the top of uh, Photoshop, my window, I'll see this select and mask button. So I'm gonna click on select and mask. And that opens up a whole new window in Photoshop. Now yours probably looks like this. And it might not look like much of anything. It just looks like the background is a little bit softer. If I look over here in my view mode though, there's lots of different ways I can look at my selection. The first way I had up was on black and white. So you can see what my selection looks like. I've got a little bit of selection here and the edge here, and that is not great. If I look on overlay, which is my preferred method, anything that is currently selected is nice and clear. Anything that is not selected has this red overlay on it. And so I can see how well things are selected. So we're gonna leave it on the red overlay view so I can see my selection. I'm also gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna now go ahead and work on refining my selection to make it a better selection than what I had originally. Now, if I'm over here on the left, I've got a couple different brushes available to me. So I'm gonna stay with quick select. I can make my brush bigger or smaller. And I'm just gonna kind of navigate around the edge and see, okay, where does it need a little love? Oops, I missed this top part of the glasses. So I'm gonna quick select that. The hair looks decent for now. The shirt is pretty good. So I went all around, I feel pretty good about that. Now it's not great. You can see how there's this kind of like edge halo of selection. So there's some things I can do to clean up my selection. First of all, um, I can go in and if I look at all my refinements over here, there's different things I can do to change my refinements. So if I smooth my refinement a little bit, that'll just make it less fuzzy and jagged. If I look in the black and white mode, you can see right now it's a pretty smooth selection. If I were to change that and make it a really smooth selection, see how it smoothed out all those bumps, which is obviously not good. Now, if we had no smooth, it's a little jagged and pixely. So again, I'm gonna set this to a very low number, maybe three. I can also go and I can make sure that I'm feathering the edge of my selection. So I go to my feather slider and I might have that at one, eh, maybe two pixels. And you can see it made that selection a little bit softer. Again, I can look in black and white and it's a nice soft edge. If I have no feathering, then it's a very hard and crisp edge. So I'm gonna feather that just a little bit. The biggest thing I wanna look at right now, personally, I wanna look at is my shift edge. Now this shows the edge of my selection. If you zoom way in, you can see there's this kind of like halo around his nose and mouth. And if I use my shift edge, I can move where that selection starts and ends. If I move, let me zoom out a little bit. 
If I move it away to the right, you can see how my selection is actually moving out away from the face, which is definitely not good because now I get this weird edge where I could see the background on my selection. If I go too far to the left though, now it starts to come and come into an overlap onto his body and cut off the edge of his face. That's not good either. Usually the shift edge is fine at zero, but I sometimes nudge it in, I don't know, like 4%. So I'm gonna set mine to negative four because that looks good to me. I might still see a little bit of an edge, but if I look in onion skin mode or marching ants mode, it looks like it's pretty close to the edge of where his face should be. Now I'm gonna go back into overlay and there's a couple areas where I really need to clean it up a little bit. Now quick select is great, but sometimes I need to just use a regular brush. So if I look over here on my left, I've got all these brushes. If I go down to the third brush, that's just a standard brush. It doesn't select things for me. It only makes a selection where I have the brush radius. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna zoom in on the glasses. There's this gap right here. Whoa, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take that away. Right now it's selected, but that's background. I wanna deselect it. So I can either hold down option, so it's in minus sign now, or I can click on the manual deselect button. And I'm gonna go and I'm just going to paint out those pixels right there. And I'm gonna zoom back out. I got rid of them. And I can see what that looks like if I go to black and white. Oh, see now there's a little gap. So that's good, that worked out. I'm gonna go back to my plus brush, just because it's always good to have that as the default. And there, I painted away. Now, I'm also going to go down to the lips. There's this little gap right here in the mouth. So I'm going to, again, take away from my selection. And I'm just going to brush that gap away a little bit so that it's a little bit of a better selection. And again, I can go over to my view mode, and I can check black and white. Looks good. And marching ants looks pretty good. Here, it looks like I need to take away a little bit and move this in just a little bit. So I can just go and I can kind of paint in here. It looks like I need to add in a little bit more selection right here. Let me take away a little bit right there. You just kind of have to brush around until you get this, what pixels you want, what pixels you don't. You can do that manually. Pretty good. All right, I'm gonna go back on overlay. The one issue I've got is if I zoom out all the way, look at this hair. Everything here on the face looks selected well, the hair does not. And that's where I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna use my favorite little tool in the Refine and Mask window, and that is the second brush down, the Refine Edge Brush. Refine Edge Brush tool is what it's called. And this is gonna pick up really subtle changes and make a really good selection. Now, I only wanna use the Refine Edge Brush on things like hair, or like the edge of a tree, or smoke, or something with a soft, hazy edge, which is hard to select manually. You'll notice if I zoom in a little bit though, I can go in and currently if I were to go to my black and white view mode, right now his hair is just this blob. But if I were to brush along this edge, click and hold, it's gonna get a little bit better. So I'm gonna go back to overlay. I'm gonna start right here where the hair is. I don't wanna do it on the face or down here. I only wanna do it with his hair, but I'm gonna take my brush, I'm gonna click, and I'm just gonna drag my mouse while I hold it down kind of along the edge where the hair stops and the background begins. And you can see that some of these white gaps in between hairs is starting to become red and it's starting to clean up my selection a little bit. If I look at my black and white mode, look how much better that selection is now. It's way more refined than it is back here. It's really picking up the different hairs. Um, it's doing a pretty good job. So now I'm gonna go up and I'm just gonna continue to do that here. And again, I'm trying not to go over the same area too many times, maybe two or three passes tops. That's gonna give me a good edge. I'm gonna go all the way around the edge of the hair. I'm gonna stop when I get to the bottom of the neck. And again, if I go to black and white mode, that's a much cleaner selection, much more accurate selection of hair. So if I go into my overlay, that looks pretty good. If I go into my marching ants, it doesn't look great there because it can't really show all of that subtle shading. So that's why I like to check it in between black and white and overlay. Now I've got my selection exactly the way I want it. I'm really happy with it. 
But I've got an issue. I need to make sure this is outputting to the right place. So if you have output settings, but nothing else underneath it, you need to uh, click the drop down arrow. And for your output settings, you wanna make sure it's outputting to a layer mask. Cause we did all this so that we can make a mask and mask away this background. So I'm gonna output it to layer mask and then I'm gonna click okay. Now what it did was it just cut out this guy and now there's no background. I actually don't love how my refined edge turned out. So I can always go back into enter select and mask and I can clean up what this is doing. The feathering might be the issue here. Let's drop that down. Let's see if that changes things a little bit. Eh, a little, but I might need to go back in later and fix that up even more. Now, if I turn my background on, this magazine background, you'll see a couple things over here if you look at your layers panel. One, I've still got the photo with the original background, but it's masked out, the background is, because if you look at my mask, black pixels show that something is covered up. White pixels, which would be the shape of the guy, show that he's still showing. My magazine background is separate. I can turn it on or off, turn the guy on or off. But I want the guy on with the mask and I want the magazine background. Now the mask stays clipped, chained, you see this little chain link, to the photo. So if I move the photo, the mask moves with it. And this gentleman is able to be moved around the page however I need, but again, nice and clean. You can see the gaps in between the hair. I can see through to this new orange background. So I've made a really good refined background. I can even Command T and move him around if I need to. Oh, and again, my selection is still really good. I'm not gonna do that obviously. Um, and that's it. So I've gone ahead and I've used my quick select tool. I've made a basic selection. I went into select and mask. I adjusted and refined my edges and I outputted it to a layer mask. And now I've got this really nice selection in Photoshop.